Would you like to hear a story for Nabarus? One that I told my grandchildren when they were small. Very well. Long ago, in the Oricon days, a golden people lived in spoiled luxury. If a body wore out, why? They would take a new one as easily as plucking a maprico. Such was the mystery of the Kuva. So, what became of death and disease? Oh, they were abundant, but not for the Orokin. They were above petty death. Such was their contempt that they decreed a special day on which to make fun of it. On Nabarus, the night of memory, the Shining People laughed at death. They dressed in costumes that recalled the old days of mortality. Skulls grinned, hallways guttered with demon lights. For one night, beauty was banished. Rot and monstrosity held sway. Now, on one very special Nabarus, Three pretty Orokin were bored, as Orokin so often were. Nabarus no longer holds its magic for me, sighed one. Masks and costumes are for children, grumbled another. Why follow the crowd, mused the third. Are we not the very elite of the elite? Ha ha! Up, my Kissingtons, my luscious loves. Send for blue couver and hot lights. I have a sport that will mend all. And in the corridor, behind a curtain, a solitary silent girl heard them and said nothing. Then the three were very wicked. For what do you think they did? Down into the streets they went, and they caught three poor Austrians, and bore them back to their gilded halls. One they peeled like a fruit and decked out with glassy splinters, and his naked jaws went chitter chatter snap and it echoed all around. Scarlet footprints he left. Another's limbs they twisted and wrenched his neck and made a bundle of him until he scuttled upsy downsy like a horrid crab. With his sockets all empty and his stretched out nose snuffling. The third they pulled thin in hand and foot. She walked spindly-wise on long tiptoes like a spider, and her entrails hung delicately down. She whispered, split-tongued and hissing as she went. Fine costumes we've made, chortled the three Oregon. Let us now try them on and visit our friends. What shrieking there will be! Oh! Our names will live forever in the court for such a prank as this! Now, the silent girl brought them their blue couva, so they could take on these twisted bodies for only a short time before returning to their own. They drank and slept and woke in their three horrid forms. Off they went, down the stairs, out the door, into the city, into the night of banners and masks and wild hilarity. Chitter chatter snack, scuffle buttle, whispery history. As you can imagine, there were many screams and laughs. Such cleverness, such wit. But, in a high room of the tower, the silent girl looked at the faces of the three sleeping Oricon. 
She went and opened a little ivory door that she was not supposed to know about, and drew forth a flask that she would have been glassed for even looking at. A flask of crimson kuva, the scarlet seal upon continuity, permanent. And she tipped it down three cruel throats. With a little laugh, she went skating away, never to return. There were many screams that nabarous night, but when the sun came up, none screamed so loud as the three who found that they were trapped in the hideous bodies they themselves had fashioned forever and ever. So, listen carefully, Tenno, and beware, for you may hear them coming tonight. Whispery hispery on long stalking bones, scuttle buttle with his eyes all empty, and skinless, dripping handed, chitter chatter snap. Happy Nabarus.